Are we excited, Patriots? All right, what a time to be alive. What a time to be an American. I am honored to be here. Thanks to Matt Schlapp, Dan Schneider, and all the amazing people, especially the volunteers that make this event the biggest conclave of conservatives in America. Now, I've been asked to talk about Russia, and I might talk about Russia, but I might talk about something else. Um, let me tell you a story first, because everybody likes a good story, and it will help you understand where I'm coming from and how I understand the threats to America today. My parents escaped from communism. They made it to the West, and I was blessed to be born in a free country the United Kingdom. And despite being born there, we would vacation every year in France. And I want to tell you about an event during my childhood that changed my life forever. My father was an athlete. He was an amazing, a powerful figure of a man, and he loved to swim. And I remember being on the beach in France, maybe seven, eight years old. And I was playing on the sand, and my father comes out of the sea, and I noticed something. I saw, for the first time in my life, I saw on his wrists these deep white lines. And I thought, he's, he's, my dad's not old enough to be wrinkled. What's that? So I said to him, Dad, what's that? Without blinking, without hesitating, with no emotion, he just looked at me and said, son, that's where the secret police bound my wrists together with wire behind my back so they could hang me from the ceiling of the torture chamber. That is the threat to America. At that point, I knew that socialism isn't just theoretical, it is a real threat. Now, why does this connect to the topic I've been given today? It connects because Russia, we have to remember, is run by a former KGB colonel. That's the kind of person who would be torturing freedom fighters like my father in the basement of the headquarters of the KGB. That's the reality. There's a lot of fake news out there about Russia, but let's look at the facts. It's run by a man who thinks it's okay to use radioactive polonium to assassinate somebody he doesn't like with, like in the UK. Not on his territory, assassinate them somewhere else. He thinks it's okay to use chemical weapons against people he disagrees with, as with the Skripal attempted assassination. This is a man who broke a 70-year taboo, international taboo, when he invaded the Ukraine and annexed the property, the territory of another nation for himself. Not since 1945, not since the end of World War II, not since we dropped nuclear bombs on Japan has that taboo been broken. Vladimir Putin broke it. However, here's the good news. Russia today is not a superpower. It's not the Soviet Union thanks in part to the President of the United States, who's driven energy prices so low that that one-horse town Russia, which runs on gas and oil, is in deep, deep trouble today. And, and let's, let's look at the reality. We just had this rat fink Michael Cohen try to get the president in trouble yesterday, but on my radio show, I used the soundbite, and I think I'm gonna use it probably every day for the next year. Michael Cohen said, no, sir, I have no evidence of Russian collusion with the president. Thank you, Michael Cohen. Why? Because there wasn't any. I was in the Oval Office with the president, it was May or June of 2017, just the two of us, and I was in there for other business, but suddenly he changed the subject, looked at me, he got that laser eye look he does sometimes, and he said, 
they will find nothing because there is nothing. So what's the reality of Russia? Russia is a threat. It's not the greatest threat to America. The greatest threat to America is China internationally. China has a plan to displace America as the greatest, most powerful country in the world by the 100th anniversary of their revolution in 2049. Don't take my word for it. Read it. It's not classified. It's called One Belt, One Road. Go to your favorite search engine, and it better not be Google. Okay? We don't like Google. And look up One Belt, One Road, and you will find the threat. But Russia remains a destabilizing force, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in the Baltic, whether it's in Asia. It tries to create eddies, disturbances in the force that it can exploit for itself. And hey, why should we be surprised? It's run by a former KGB colonel. Did I tell you that? This is the reality. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. But let's just look at how the president is dealing with Russia. How do you deal with bullies? There's only the right way to deal with bullies. You don't cave to them. You don't send Hillary to give them a nice plastic reset button. That's not how you deal with bullies. Let's just go back in time. If you haven't heard this, don't take my word for it. Check it out. After Russia broke a 70-year taboo, invaded its neighbor, annexed, stole its territory, what did the 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, do? This isn't a joke. He shipped blankets to the Ukrainians. Blankets. So they'll have something to wrap the dead bodies in, I guess. What did we do when we got to the White House? We instigated one of the toughest sanction regimes in modern history. When we heard of the assassination attempt in the UK, we kicked out 60 Russian diplomats, okay, <laughs> spies. And then what did we send Kiev? Did we send them more blankets? Did we send them socks? <laughs> Donald J. Trump sent the government of the Ukraine anti-tank missiles. Yeah. America is back, and we know how to deal with bullies. We're not going to fight your wars for you, but we'll help you fight your own wars. The most important thing the president has done is to give a speech in Warsaw where he said, America is back, we are proud of our Judeo-Christian heritage, and we will stand by any nation shoulder to shoulder that shares our values, whether it's Poland, whether it's Israel, whether it's any other country like the Ukraine. That is America. Now, let me cheat and talk about what I really want to talk about. <laughs> Dan, no, he's not here, good. Matt, not here, okay. There is a connection. I, I'm not stretching it. There is a segue. Russia will be dealt with. We will put it back in its box, just like President is dealing with North Korea, playing hardball, just the same way he's dealing with Iran and all the threats that face us. But you know what the biggest threat to America is? Not socialism in Moscow, socialism here in America. <laughs> According to the amazing Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, they did a poll last year in which they found that 52% of American millennials would like to live in a socialist or communist America. That, yes indeed, boo, yes indeed, hiss. That is why 40 4-0 Democrat uh, candidates in the last midterm election called themselves socialists. That is why Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has introduced the Green New Deal, which is 
which is, remember this one, use it, it's a watermelon. <laughs> Green on the outside, deep, deep red communist on the inside. They want to take your pickup truck. They want to rebuild your home. They want to take away your hamburgers. This is what Stalin dreamt about but never achieved. You are on the front lines of the war against communism coming back to America under the guise of democratic socialism, which is just a PC term for communism. Yeah. I want everyone to take to heart Donald J. Trump is never going to let it happen. And as he said to Congress, America will never be a socialist country. America first, America, f America first, that's a great name for a radio show. <laughs> Have you heard of it? Yeah. Check it out. America first, America always. God bless all of you. Can I ask you a favor before I go? The boss always likes this. Can you stand up and all give you a thumbs up? <laughs> Come on, everybody. God bless.